Hey everyone, in a previous video, we built up the expression for the velocity potential, phi p, due to uniform flow and source panels that approximate the geometry of an airfoil. And this term here comes from my building more complex flows video, which comes from uh, building up these more complex flows from a single source. So this is the expression for the velocity potential uh, induced by a single source, which is capital lambda over two pi times natural log of r, where r is the distance from the source to the point that we're trying to find this velocity pen potential at. Now for the vortex panel method, we want to use vortex panels instead of source panels to build up this airfoil geometry. And so from my elementary flow videos, uh, we have a single vortex velocity potential. It's phi v is equal to uh, negative capital gamma over two pi times theta, where theta is the angle from the positive x-axis to that point that you're trying to compute the uh, induced velocity potential at. So to create the total velocity potential for the vortex panel method, we essentially take this and just substitute in the vortex uh, flow into the more complicated uh, expression here. So we have phi p, the velocity potential induced at point p, is equal to the same uh, induced flow from the uniform flow. And now instead here we have negative lowercase uh, gamma j over 2 pi times the integral over the jth panel of theta pj dsj, where the theta pj kind of mimics the rpj term. The capital letters denote the source strength or the vortex strength, so capital lambda for the source strength, capital gamma for the vortex strength. In these equations, though, we have lowercase letters. We have lowercase lambda, lowercase gamma, and that's because that's the uh, source strength per unit length or the vortex strength per unit length, and we get rid of the per length by integrating over a distance or the panel length. So the expression on the previous whiteboard was for the velocity potential induced at point P, an arbitrary point P in the flow. So now we just rewrite that expression for an arbitrary panel I. So we have phi I, we have the free stream term, and then we have the vortex panel term where now we have theta Ij instead of theta Pj. Now to get the normal velocity component from this, we just take the derivative of phi i with respect to the normal direction, n i, and so we have v n i is equal to d phi i d n i. Here we have the free stream term, and since v infinity and alpha are constants, uh, they don't go into the derivative, so we just have dx i d n i and dy i d n i here. And then we have the same term as up here, and since uh, gamma j does not change with i, we can bring the uh, partial derivative only inside of the integral here, so we have d theta i j d n i. This term here was taken care of, or simplified, in one of my previous videos, so we can just point you to that video, and then we end up getting that this whole term ends up equaling v infinity cosine beta i, and then this term is the same as this, and this integral right here is the focus of this video. Now, if you have not watched my iij source panel method derivation video, please watch that first because the denominator for this is gonna be the same as that one, and I'm not gonna go through the full integral derivation because we already did that. So please go watch that first. If you already have, then we're good to go. Before we can evaluate the integral, we need to get an expression for theta ij in terms of variables that we can integrate over or that we can turn into other variables we can integrate over. So that's xi, yi, xj, and yj. So here I've drawn two panels up here, panel i in a random orientation, panel j down here in a random orientation. And theta ij is the angle between the horizontal and the uh, line connecting the control points of panel i and panel j. So the control point here, xi, yi, the control point here, xj, yj. And so we can see that this angle here is just equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite over adjacent. The opposite is the y distance between the two panels. So we have the yi minus yj. And then the adjacent is just the x distance difference between the two panels. So we have xi minus xj. So the expression that we want to solve for is then this. kij, that's a geometrical integral for the vortex panel method for the normal velocity. That's equal to the integral of d theta ij dn i dsj. And then we just plug in for theta ij. We plug in this expression up here. So we have d dn i of that inverse tangent uh, integrated over dsj. So before we tackle the integral, we need to tackle the partial derivative of that theta ij term. And so first we need to evaluate the derivative of that inverse tangent. 
and we're going to use both the chain rule and the quotient rule. So first we start off with the uh, derivative of the inverse tangent, and if we're just taking the derivative of the inverse tangent of x, it's the normal expression you've seen, 1 over 1 plus x squared. If the argument to the inverse tangent is also a function of x though, then we have 1 over 1 plus f of x squared times df of x dx, that's the chain rule. And note that in our case, f of x is in the form of uh, a quotient, so ax over bx. So this df of x dx is going to be d ax over bx dx, so that's what this is here, and that from any calc book will be bx times a prime of x minus ax times b prime of x all over bx squared, where we note that the prime denotes a derivative with respect to x, it just keeps the form a little bit simpler. So now we can combine these two expressions up here to get the final form uh, of that partial differential term. Note now that all the derivatives are actually re with respect to ni instead of x, x was just to make it easier up here. So we have d dni of that inverse tangent term here, noting that this in here is the f of x, the argument to the inverse tangent. So first we have this, 1 over 1 plus f of x squared, that's here, 1 over 1 plus the argument squared. Then we have the df of x dx, which is this, which is this. So we have here bx, that's the denominator of the argument of the inverse tangent, so that's xi minus xj, that's why that's here. Then we have a prime of x, which is the uh, derivative with respect to ni of the numerator, so we have dyi dni minus dyj dni, that's here. Then we have minus, then we have a of x, that's just the numerator, so yi minus yj times b prime of x, that's just the derivative of the denominator, so we have dxi dni minus dxj dni, that's here. And then it's all over bx squared, which is the denominator, xi minus xj squared. So first we're going to simplify down some of the terms in this second term, uh, namely the partial derivatives that are still left. Uh, first thing that we can do is that the terms with different subscripts are equal to zero, so dyj dni is equal to zero, dxj dni is equal to zero, that's just because the uh, value of yj and xj doesn't depend on a change in ni. Next we can say that the like subscript partial derivative terms uh, are taken care of in the same way that we did in the source panel method derivation, so I'm just going to quickly go through it. This is panel I here with uh, index k, and this is k plus 1, so it's going this way, and that means that the normal vector points this direction, and we can drop a perpendicular to the x-axis here, and so we get that this makes a triangle, which I'm just going to blow up over here. This is a, a differential change in the x direction, differential change in the y direction, differential change in the normal direction, and this angle here from my panel method geometry video is just delta i, so we can write down cosine of delta i, that's here, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, is equal to dxi dni, sine of delta i is opposite over hypotenuse, is equal to dyi dni. So we can plug in zero for both of these here, and we can plug in cosine of delta i and sine delta i for this and this. So I've just simplified down the expression that I showed down here. Remember this first term was the y partial derivative, so we have dyi dni, that's sine delta i minus dyj dni, which is zero, so that's why we just have this here. And this one here was the x partial derivatives, and we had dxi dni minus dxj dni, so we have this cosine delta i minus zero leaves us with just cosine delta i. So now we're going to simplify the first term down here in the expression, which I've written back up here. We can also just separate out the square into the numerator, uh, numerator and denominator, so we have this expression right here, and we'll multiply this expression by xi minus xj squared over xi minus xj squared, which is the same as just multiplying by one. And so you can see that the xi minus xj squared in the numerator, that's right here, and then the one that's in the denominator, we multiply that by one, that's this term right here. We multiply this term here by this, and you can see that this cancels out with this, and we just get yi minus yj squared. And now we can plug that in for this expression here, and we get this. And so we'll simplify this long expression, so we have that term we just solved for. This is the same as this, and now you can see that we have this term right here in the numerator cancels with this term in the denominator, and so we're left with this numerator, that's this whole expression here, over this denominator, that's this expression here. So I just rewrote the expression from the previous whiteboard up at the top here, and now we're going to do the same thing that we did in the source panel method derivation video, 
uh, because the geometry is the same as the SPM. So we're going to use the same geometric values for substitution. And the reason that we need to do this is because the XI and YI values, those are the control points at the ith panel. Those are fixed. However, we're integrating over the jth panel in that integral that we're trying to solve for the whole purpose of this video. And so if we're integrating over the jth panel, we need the xj and the yj variables to be something that we can uh, that we can plug in that we know those values. So one of those are the or one of those is the boundary points of the jth panel and the other is the panel orientation angle of the jth panel from the panel method geometry video. So what we have here is panel j and we can see that the angle between the horizontal and the uh, inward side of the panel is phi j. Uh, the distance progress along the jth panel is sj, some random point on the jth panel. That's our xj, yj, lowercase. And then this point here, the starting point of the panel, is capital xj, yj. And so we can write the or express the values of xj and yj as they are over here, which is uh, xj plus uh, the pr distance progress along the panel times cosine of phi j. So that's the x distance up to this point, right? The x progression. And then the y is the same. It's just yj plus sj sine phi j. So we're trying to see how far do we go up to get to that point. We can also convert from the delta variable up here to phi to make all the angles uh, be the panel orientation angles phi. And so we know from the panel method geometry video that delta is equal to phi plus 90 degrees always. Go see that video if you have any questions about that. And so we can just write that cosine of delta is equal to cosine of phi plus 90, which is equal to negative sine of phi. Similarly, sine of delta is equal to sine of phi plus 90 is equal to cosine of phi. And now all I'm doing is just plugging in uh, this and this down here up into the expression up here for this and this. So we have xi minus xj here times this term, which is just cosine of phi i minus yi minus yj times the cosine term, which is gonna be negative sine phi i, denominator stays the same. Okay, so we're gonna start with the numerator from the previous whiteboard, which is shown up here. The first thing we're gonna do is plug in for the lowercase xj and yj from the other expressions on the previous whiteboard. So I've plugged in for the xj and the yj, that's this term here and this term here. Now we're just gonna distribute this term through everything that's in this bracket and this term through everything that's in this bracket. And we end up with the expression down here where we have xi cosine phi i minus xj cosine phi i minus sj cosine phi i j, uh, times cosine phi j, that's here. Then we have plus because we have minus, minus, so we have plus yi sine phi i, then we have minus because we have minus, 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 that's yj sine phi i, and then we, again we have minus, 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 so we have sj sine phi i sine phi j. Uh, make sure to keep your i and j subscripts correct. Then we're going to group all the terms for cosine phi i, sine phi i, and sj. So for the cosine phi i, we have this term here and this term here. So we have xi minus xj times cosine phi i, that's here. Then we have this term and this term for the sine phi i. So we have yi minus yj times sine phi i, that's here. Then we have this term and this term for the sj. So we have minus sj, and then we have cosine phi i, cosine phi j, plus sine phi i, sine phi j. For this term here, we can use the following trig identity where that whole expression, that's this, uh, we plug in cosine of a minus b where uh, a is phi i and b is phi j. These can be flipped around in this particular instance because cosine is an even function. And that means that we get the following expression for uh, after plugging into this expression right here. So we have the xi minus xj cosine phi i plus yi minus yj sine phi i minus sj times cosine of phi i minus phi j. I've just rewritten that expression from down here up here and you'll note that the numerator takes the form c s j plus d where c is the term for the sj term, so that's minus cosine of phi i minus phi j, and d is everything else, so that's all of this up here. And this should look very familiar if you've watched any of my other derivation videos. And you'll note that the denominator was actually solved for previously in my SPM derivation, so we're not gonna go through that here. You can check out those videos for that derivation, but it's in the form of sj squared plus 2asj plus b, where a is equal to this, and b is equal to this. Note that in these ones here, we have phi j's, whereas up here we have the phi i. And so you can note that the final integral is in the same form as the source panel method, which we have already solved, so I'm not gonna do that again. I'm just gonna show you the result. We have kij, that's the geometric integral for the vortex panel method for the normal velocity 
This is what we were trying to solve at the beginning. Uh, the uh, integral over the panel J, d theta ij, d ni over dsj. And this is what we ended up with. This was the numerator form. This is the denominator form from the previous couple of whiteboards. And the solution to this integral is shown here, which is the same as all of my other derivation videos for the geometric integrals with the following a, b, c, d, and e variables listed down here. Now that we've done this video, we need two more videos for the geometric integrals. The next one's gonna be lij, which is the tangential velocity uh, derivative for the vortex panel method, and then we need to get nx and ny, which are the streamline uh, geometric integrals for the x direction and the y direction. Once we finish those two derivations, we can put together a system of equations that's very similar to the source panel method, but slightly different. And then after that, we will code up the vortex panel method and look at some results for an airfoil. Thanks for watching.